This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2012 Scion IQ Base. Up front is a 1.3 liter inline 4 and down below is a CVT. Now I'm excited to be driving this IQ for two main reasons. First of all, Scion no longer exists. It was a sub-brand of Toyota throughout the mid-2000s and early 2010s. It was actually disbanded in 2016, and so the Scion nameplate is no longer around. So I enjoy driving cars that don't really exist anymore because they're only going to get more and more rare, and I'd like to drive them before they're complete barn finds. But the second reason that I want to drive this here IQ is because here in America, this car is sold as the Scion IQ. And over in Japan, this car is sold as a Toyota IQ. But over in Europe, this car is sold as an Aston Martin. So essentially over in Europe, there is a law saying that a certain manufacturer has to have a certain average of fuel efficiency and economy. And so the company of Aston Martin who makes luxury cars and sports cars and big old V8s, they couldn't meet the average. So what did they do? Did they make their cars more efficient? No, they just added one of these to their lineup to bring up the overall average. That's it. <laughs> so I hope one day when I make it over to Europe, I can drive an Aston Martin badged Scion IQ because that to me is so funny and so interesting. Now, before we get on to the rest of the video, if you guys are interested in selling your car, please click the link in the description below. Cashforcars.com will buy your car with a salvage title, good title, running, non-running, whatever it is. Please go support the channel by clicking the link in the description below. You can get a fast and easy quote for free, and they will pick up your vehicle in less than 24 hours. So let's get back to that 1.3 liter inline four. I'll put the horsepower and torque up on the screen. It is nothing special, it, uh, it is what it is. This is not a power monster, but why should it? What you really should care about is that fuel economy, which I will also put up on the screen, and that is something good. This is a little city car. This is for someone that lives in a very urban area. This isn't a long haul trucker of a vehicle. So, power, don't really care, but fuel economy, that's where it's at. All right, so we're out here on the test track. Like I said, it is pretty icy out here. Um, so I don't know if this is going to be a full acceleration test, but we'll give it our good shot. This is the cleanest, driest portion of the track. So I guess I can move it over for sport mode. Here we go. Yeah, no traction. It's not bad. It definitely does things, but it's not fast. This is not a fast vehicle. You're not going to get any world speed records with a Scion IQ, but it moves. That's really all I could say about it. But like I said, paired to that four cylinder is a CVT, means continuously variable transmission, and it's fine. This isn't really a sporty application, so I understand why they use a CVT. It's cheap, it's effective, it works, and helps get a little bit better fuel economy. However, if you absolutely hate CVTs, like some people do, then I would look away from this car. Last but not least, of course, the Scion IQ is front wheel drive, in case you were wondering. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. We don't have a whole lot in here, but we'll go through it anyway. Well, in front of me, I have a couple gauges and a screen. On the far left, this is actually a nice little amber screen, giving me the time of day, my mileage, fuel remaining, things like that. And then in the center in front of me, I have my speedometer and tachometer down at the bottom. Interesting that I do get a tachometer. A lot of base model cheapo cars don't come with a tachometer, but you get it here in the IQ. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my volume commands and mode for the radio. However, I don't get anything on the right, so the steering wheel is a little bit asymmetrical. So 
if that's going to bother you, just a heads up there. But the steering wheel does have some stitching on it. It feels a little bit nicer than base. However, this is a base model, so I like that nice little touch from Scion. And of course, you have that Scion badge right in front of you. To the left of me, I have my gauge dimmer switch and my mirror switches. And then on the door, I have my power windows and power locks. As well as I do get a little speaker on the door, which is kind of interesting. It looks like it was just glued there by, you know, some teenager, but that's the stock location for it. And that's the stock speaker. Moving into the center, speaking of speakers, I do have my Scion radio. Now this is pretty funky looking, a lot of buttons, very, very late 2000s, but it is an official Pioneer unit. Scion has always been good about this. They've always used pretty good products. And I do have USB in, I do have Bluetooth, which is really, really nice. So I can actually call through the radio, which is again, very nice for 2012 and for a base model little tiny city car but that's really it nothing else really to note about the radio down below that i do have two climate control vents and then i have the climate controls themselves i like the fact that these climate controls are vertical i think they look really cool and they sort of remind me of like a tall skyscraper building that has a glass elevator if you know what i'm talking about like if you've ever been in a tall building and it has a glass elevator like that i don't know it just kind of reminds me of that and i like it I do have my fan speed, where to send it, and how hot or cold I want it with an AC button. And then at the very bottom, I do have a 12 volt outlet. Then down on the center console on the left, I have my shifter, nothing too crazy here. Very typical Toyota jigsaw shifter that you'll see in every other Toyota product from this era. Then to the right of that, I have my traction control off, lock and unlock, my USB and aux in, and then my fog light button. So nice little cluster of buttons off to the right, which are really handy. Then I have my physical parking brake and my cup holder. So we'll do a big friggin' bottle test. And of course, no surprise here, the Scion IQ fails the big friggin' bottle test. I don't know what I expected, but this ain't it, chief. Now we gotta talk about the seats. The seats are decently comfortable. The more and more I drive this car, which I've driven this car for about two hours, and I actually don't mind the seats. A lot of base model vehicle seats are hard and harsh and they suck. These actually don't. They look a little funky. Well, they look a lot a bit funky, especially the especially the bottom portion. However, they are comfortable and for a little car like this, I have absolutely no complaints about them. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So we'll do a back seat review. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we're in the back here, I guess. Um, this is not for people. The passenger seat is actually touching the back seats. There is no room for people back here. I'm not even going to put that up. I do have cup holders back here for some weird reason that say Scion on them to remind you who's punishing you. But I do have like seat belts. I have speakers back here, uh, but this is not good. If your friends have either legs or self-respect, they will not be able to ride back here. So uh, this is just a bad back seat. But let's take a look at the immense cargo space behind me. Oh, did I say immense? I meant pitiful. Look at this. You can't even fit the floor mats back here. Look, there's maybe, <laughs> I mean, these seats do go down, to be fair. I mean, they sort of go down, not really. If you take the headrests out, they'll fold down, but that's really the way to go. So take these headrests out, fold them down, give yourself at least a little bit of a trunk. Cause right now with these seats up, I mean, look at that. That's, that, that has to be the smallest cargo area I've ever seen in my life. Don't expect to transport things in this thing. Now we gotta talk about the looks. I like the look of the IQ. I think that it looks really cool. It definitely looks unique. And one thing that you'll definitely note that is apparent on the exterior as well as the interior is just how flipping large these side windows are. I mean, you're gonna have a problem registering this car because these windows span three different area codes. So massive, massive windows, which is nice. Visibility is great in this car, but overall I just like the quirky look of it. I think it's fun and I think it looks different. You don't really see vehicles like this anymore. With Smart no longer coming to the US, what looks like this? 
nothing. Speaking of exteriors, if you are legally required to run a front plate on your vehicle in the state or country that you live in, but you think it's too ugly, then click the link in the description below and get yourself a con plate. The con plate holder is a suction cup holder for your license plate that goes on the inside of your windshield. This means you can remain legal when driving around, but for pictures, for shows, it's easily removable from the windshield, so the front of your car looks its best. Click the link in the description below, get your own con plate, and keep your car looking good. And so my final thoughts on the Scion IQ. Well, like I mentioned, this is actually my second time filming this car because I had a technical error with one of my pieces of equipment when I last drove it. So this is now my second run through. So I have a little bit more of a honed idea of the Scion IQ and I actually like it. I think this is a great little city car. First of all, you have Toyota reliability. It's a Toyota engine, knock on wood. It's not really going to break down on you. And especially if you use it for this car's intended purpose, which is a little city car, get from point A to point B, not really far distances, this thing's gonna last forever. But the second reason I really like the IQ is the driving feel. Because it's so small and the wheels are at the very edges of the vehicle, it turns literally on a dime. The turning circle is insanely preposterous. It turns on a dime, the steering is very, very good. Little inputs actually make a difference which is hard to find, again, in an economy car. If you have friends, don't take them in this car. Don't take them in this car. But if you're going away to college, if you live in the city, downtown Chicago parking is an absolute nightmare. Well, parking this thing is a breeze anywhere. You could park this thing on a piece of legal paper. And so my true final feelings are, if you need a car that is good for road trips, highway driving, long distances with your friends, this is absolutely not the car. Please look at something else. If you wanna go Scion, look at a TC, look at an IM, look at an XB, because this is not it. But if you live in the city or you're down at college and you really only use the car to get groceries once or twice a week, or if you just need a little car to get around because you have another fun car for the weekends, or maybe your spouse has a bigger car so you don't really need a big car, then this car is great. It's really, really good. Like I said, it rides really nice and it feels good to drive, gets good gas, Toyota reliability, you can't really miss with this thing. And that's what I like about it. The Scion IQ is a win in my book. It's just a solid little win, but man, man do I wanna drive the Aston Martin version. I mean, what could they do to this thing? I don't know. But huge thanks to Toyota of Naperville for allowing me to take out their used Scion IQ. Toyota of Naperville will service Scion vehicles still. They do a lot of Scion work. So if you have a Scion vehicle, you can take it to Toyota of Naperville. They still have Scion techs on site. And so they will get your car running properly if that's an issue. But huge thank you to them. Their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.